Breaking news in Northeast Houston where a child has died in a car crash. This is the scene this morning. The car crashed into a ditch. ABC 13 reporter Jeff Hailing now on the scene at Tidwell and Valley Forest. He joins us live with the latest. Jeff. Good morning to you, Tom. Investigators just now getting out here from what appears to be the district attorney's office. We can tell you that this was a single vehicle accident. Uh, we're not sure exactly which direction uh, down Tidwell this vehicle was coming, but the vehicle ended up in a ditch. As you can see right there, it is upside down. There was a mother and child in the vehicle when this crash took place. The child unfortunately passed away due to his injuries inside the car from the vehicle crash. The mother, we do not have an update on her condition, but we can tell you that when we pulled up to the scene about 45 minutes ago. An ambulance was rushing away from this scene. Right now, crash investigators trying to figure out if speed may have been a factor in this or if something else was going on. But as you can see, that vehicle upside down in the ditch. Investigation still underway at this hour. We're hoping to get more information from police as soon as we do. We will update you online. Reporting live, Jeff Ewing, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. All right, thanks, Jeff. Around 9:30 this morning, the Houston Police Department will escort the body of Sergeant Chris Brewster, who was killed on the line of duty Saturday. His body will be escorted from the medical examiner's office on OST to Pat H. Foley and Company Funeral Home. That's near West 34th and Shepherd. ABC 13 reporter Catherine Marshan joins us with more details. Catherine. Good morning. Sergeant Brewster was sworn in as an officer in 2010, and his friends at HPD say he was always making everybody laugh, but he's also being remembered for what he did outside of work. He was a the fact that someone so young and so bright um, his life was taken away um, for a foolish, foolish reason. From HPD to the H-Town CrossFit, Sergeant Chris Brewster left his mark on the city of Houston. Tall and strong, he used to coach at the gym during his time off and would always have a smile on his face. Friends say that smile kept them going. He was coming through in his patrol SUV and rolled down the window and yelled my name and was like, go Amanda, as I was um, on my run. So he was just encouraging even, you know, when he was, didn't have to be. Sergeant Brewster also had a softer side. Here he is playing the mandolin at Sagemont Church. He was involved in the youth ministry, the third generation of his family to worship there. Buddies, uh, my son's best friends have been in all of each other's weddings, and so this is a really tough, close to home kind of a thing. So please pray for them. It's very hard. It makes no sense. And we know and love him so much. Sergeant Brewster's body will be escorted from here at the medical examiner's office to the funeral home at 915 this morning. We will be streaming it on ABC13.com and on our news app. We're in the medical center. Catherine Marchand, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Well, the police officers union posted this tweet overnight saying Sergeant Christopher Brewster was a loving husband, a caring friend and a servant to the community. We will miss you, Chris. Rest in peace, brother. We will see you again one day. And today, the body of another officer killed in the line of duty will be moved. Stephen Carr was shot and killed Saturday night in Fayetteville, Arkansas. He was also part of a family of law enforcement here in Houston. The 27 year old officer was shot Saturday night sitting in his police car outside the station. The police officers union here in Houston says Carr's father is a retired HPD sergeant and his stepfather is a current member of HPD. Carr's body today will be escorted to the Arkansas State Capitol building. Obviously we're struggling, but we're one big family. We're going to lean on one another and we're going to get through this. And the community, the outpouring of support has just been nothing short of incredible. 35-year-old man who shot Carr was killed by other officers as they responded. Well, today, the race for the Texas 22nd congressional seat heats up. A member of the Bush family is expected to join and run. According to the Texas Tribune, Pierce Bush, the grandson of the late President George H.W. Bush, will file to run for that seat, currently held by Republican Pete Olson, who is retiring. Bush has worked as CEO of Big Brother, Big Sisters, Lone Star. Over the weekend, the Fort Bend County Sheriff Troy Nails officially announced he'll be in the run as well for that race. District 22 covers the majority of Fort Bend County. And early voting in this month's runoff election ends tomorrow. You can still vote early today and tomorrow between 7 in the morning and 7 p.m. The races include Houston Mayor, City Council positions, and HISD board seats, plus the Bel Air runoff. We posted a sample ballot and a breakdown of the candidates at ABC13.com.
Well, investigators just gave new information about a security guard who was shot trying to stop someone from breaking into a car. And as we take a live look at the apartments, that shooting happened about 3 o'clock this morning at Pagewood in OC. The crime scene tape is still up. Officers say when they arrived, that man took off running the suspect and the security guard chased him and they all lost sight of him. But then officers heard two gunshots and found the guard who had been shot wounded in the chest and in the arm. He remains in stable condition. The gunman got away. Today, the Children's Museum of Houston is hosting a special event for children with autism. It's a sensory friendly day with limited noise and light. Therapy dogs will be there along with the Houston Ballet and Santa Claus. This starts at 10 a.m. Doors will be closed to the rest of the public. Pre-registration is recommended and tickets are $5. Also happening today, you can enjoy free food and drinks as Torties opens its newest Houston area location. The grand opening party is from 5 to 8 p.m. tonight in the Tanglewood Court Shopping Center. That's on Sample near Fountain View. The taco chain is also offering some giveaways. The restaurant officially opens for business at that location on Wednesday. Cue the music and the romance. Astros shortstop Carlos Correa performed a choreographed dance with his groomsmen at his wedding reception over the weekend. He posted a video to Instagram saying it was the best night of their lives. Former Astros teammate Tony Kemp was one of the groomsmen. Correa married Daniela Rodriguez in a ceremony in the Dominican Republic on Saturday. She posted a photo of the two from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Punta Cana. The two officially wed last month at the courthouse. Carlos proposed after the Astros 2017 World Series championship. All right, let's take a look at your weather forecast. Alita, good morning. Good morning. A warm and humid start uh, to this December day. We're headed toward record-breaking territory, challenging a record set back in 2007 at Bush Airport. 81, my forecast high. 82 is the record. Lots of 80s on the map, closer to the coastline in the upper 70s there. We'll go from the 80s into the 50s overnight tonight as a frontal system moves through. We will see some wet weather with that front, but more noticeable will be the falling temperatures as we get into the afternoon going from those 50s in the morning down to 46 47 degrees around the Houston area around 3 o'clock and those winds will be picking up notice future track indicating some widespread rains to start off your morning on Tuesday and those rains will be ongoing at times some brief heavy downpours but no flooding issues are expected maybe a half an inch to an inch of rain for most areas isolated higher amounts will be possible and then the rain showers taper off with most of that rain coming to an end by six seven o'clock tomorrow evening and then when you wake up on Wednesday morning it's going to be a shock to the body as those winds slowly start to taper off still about 10 15 mile per hour winds enough to make a difference as the cold air evicting into our area will allow those temperatures to drop in the 30s but when you factor in that breeze those feels like temperatures will be in the 20s and 30s Wednesday morning so get ready we've got some jacket weather on the way and that's going to take us through the end of the week. By the weekend, temperatures warm up again. Catherine. Alita, as we head into our evening hours, there will be a closure affecting your drive on 290 of the Northwest Freeway. You'll see lane restrictions in place outbound from 34th to Pinemont. Three lanes closed off from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. And that is a nightly closure through Friday. So use the feeder road as a way to get through instead and watch out for those construction cones. Okay, and that's all the time we have for the news this morning. You can always stay up to date with us on the ABC 13 News app and on our website, abc13.com. Have a great day.